It's not I'm, send me into a rage. And, and with that, we do this. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 147 for Thursday, the 26th of October, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek, and we're just going to celebrate beer tonight because it's Oktoberfest, and we have an awesome group of guests, group, group of guests with us tonight. Kent, how you been? Uh, make it quick. I want to introduce our people. <laughs> Good, dude. I'm so happy that it's Thursday. It's RMP. Tell us who our guests are. Uh, this would be the uh, the Have a Drink crew. Um, let's, let's run around. Uh, introduce yourselves all at the same time. Uh, okay. Um, I'm Casey. Pr- Crap. <laughs> Not the way it goes. <laughs> that went as well as I expected it to. It's like, I'm just going to wait. Uh, Pretty Lee Walker. Uh, Justin Frazier or Bob. Yeah. I'm Christopher Walker. And I'm Casey Price. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that, that sounds familiar. Right? Uh, yeah. It's no, this is great. Amos, you were actually on the Have a Drink show very recently. I was. I was. It was, uh, it was, it was awesome. It was, it was just one of those times when uh, you sit down in front of a computer and you have a great time. You get fucking half lit uh, <laughs> or, or all the way lit, as I was, and then go about your day. It was great. I think we hit Ritual Misery Bingo. I think... Because we've had Kent on on one of our audio shows during the Meritzen Bowl. Yes, one that was our first Meritzen Bowl episode. He was super surprise guest. <laughs> As in, we didn't even know he was going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a blast. That was just over a year ago. That was a lot of fun. Well, I mean, if they it, continue, it they just keep having a guest on every year. It'd be like the annual thing. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, no, uh, for, for reals though, uh, they, they have a podcast called have a drink and they review beers. They review beer packs. They talk about the, the science and the history of beer, the, the, uh, the process of home brewing and why you want to do that and why, why you want to look at a mass market beer versus a craft beer versus a home brew versus a bottle of whiskey. I mean, they, they talk about all of it and kind of take it into this one, a very, very easy to digest format. And look, if I can follow along. (laughs) <laughs> that's it's very entertaining and very informative and um yeah a great group of people and uh it's just a great show um you guys are on twitch now is that right yes yeah yeah what is just your what is your channel so people so people uh, can find you twitch.tv slash have a drink show yeah yeah don't forget the have a drink show part that's yeah, and and we'll we'll do more plugs at the end of the show. We'll um we'll direct everyone to your website and and your Twitter and all the all the cool places to find uh, where you guys are. Uh, Amos, did you have a did you have a good week or no. um, is this the highlight? This this <laughs> this is getting to be the highlight. Um, <laughs> so we have a homeowners association, and it's a pretty tight knit group. Oh, it's twenty damn it. twenty two people, twenty two houses. It's very small. It's one cul de sac. Okay. Those are that that's definitely like two WPR words right there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cold um, and homeowners association. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you have a maid too. Uh, well, I have six kids, so that almost counts. Yeah, right. It's, it, that's a self defeating maid. Though. They equal one maid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's a self defeating uh, defeating uh, service though, because they're the reason we need a maid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but we, but we, we throw, um, we have parties around here, you know, New Year's Eve party, Halloween party, Christmas party, all that kind of stuff, you know, little thing in the summer. And well, the, the couple that had the Halloween party scheduled on, on their slate had to drop out because of, uh, work reasons. And my wife stood up and said, Hey, we'll, we'll join the fray and we'll start hosting parties too. And we're going to host the Halloween party. And that was with about three weeks ahead of time to uh, notice, but we didn't, everything was so busy this month that we didn't have t- a chance to really plan. So since Friday night, that's all we've been doing in this house is prepping for Halloween. And it's been miserable. Uh, <laughs> although on the plus side, I did make 94 shots last night, 94 jello shots in syringes. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. That I mean, sorry, like Casey knows something about making some syringe shots. Yeah. What flavors? That's uh, what I want to so, know. So dark cherry, uh, yeah, black cherry, um, yeah. cherry, 
raspberry and strawberry. And then we're going to have the lime, the green ones are going to be for the kiddos. They're going to be the non-alcoholic types. <laughs> well, so this, is a, this is another good chance to give a shout out to another show. Didn't uh, Modern Rogue just do, what was it, uh, Old Fashioned or Manhattan Jello shots? Classiest yeah. Jello shots I've ever seen. <laughs> mm. exactly. Yes. That's awesome. Um, so I, I did the math, and the first batch I made, you couldn't taste the alcohol at all. It was really, really uh, light on the fare. So uh, they were about eight, 8.75 by my math. And the, the next batch I made, the big batch, the, the massive batch, was it, it's sitting at, at 15%. So Nice. That's an appropriate shot. Yeah, I mean, you can you can <laughs> taste the alcohol, but barely. Yes. Right to where it couldn't yeah. be served in some states. Mm. <laughs> couldn't be shipped over some state lines. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> how's your how's your week, uh, guys? I mean, uh, other than having me on your show and ruining that for you. Uh, no, that was amazing. <laughs> so, uh, well, good show. the two of us uh, were in the Great Smoky Mountains, or just outside the Great Smoky Mountains. A.K.A. Yeah. the Red Room. The yeah. red room, yeah. <laughs> the, the cabin that just looked like hell for whatever reason. We're just looking around like, why does it look so red? They, they were holding up their beers. You know, we were doing the, the the beer tasting there. Every time they held up a beer, it was just red. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been fixed. Yeah, nice and nice and hazy. Nice and that. not red. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We're pretty sure Bob was streaming from the surface of the st- sun during a uh, solar flare. <laughs> I don't the- know what was going on <laughs> with my setup. I, I've been staring at my thing. I muted every channel. Yeah. Ho- uh, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't mute the one I was on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that was all, all related to sun activity because it went away once the sun went down. <laughs> yeah, it did, didn't it? That just supports my and Bob's argument that the sun is evil because <laughs> we are not sun people. <laughs> all it does is burn and cause me misery. Yes. <laughs> Reminds me of the old Adam Sandler that, you know, fuck the sun. <laughs> yeah. He was like a, a cult member, like a yeah, yeah. racing the darkness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the nighttime is the right time. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Kent? Uh, uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing you, uh, you, you uh, built a shed or refurbished the bar or uh, maybe tore down, a, tore out an engine and, uh, and, and started uh, resurfacing some heads. Dude, that that would be awesome. I yeah, let's pretend I did that. Uh, no, I didn't do anything nearly that cool. Uh, but I did finish my binge of The Office, the U.S. version of The Office. Finally, yeah. Like I've been trying to to finish this thing for for months, and uh, finally, I finally powered through it this weekend. Is it is it really a binge if it takes you months to do it? Well, I, would call I mean, it a binge. okay, it's, it's uh, maybe I'm using that term loosely, but uh, I did start from episode <laughs> one, and I I watched it all the way through so, so whatever so you want to call that it'd uh, be that'd be a watch through it, sure let's go with that i well whatever you call it i finished it and um yeah i'm i'm satisfied with the ending i was a little bit worried in the final season because there were some things going on i didn't care for but uh it it wrapped up uh beautifully um i know the show is several years old now so this is old news but uh if you haven't watched The Office, like if you've seen like a few episodes, but uh, and you know, and you liked it, but you haven't watched the whole thing, I recommend that to to anybody. Like it's it's a good journey. How does it rank it, versus say Seinfeld? Uh, well, I fucking hated Seinfeld, so it rates very <laughs> highly against Seinfeld. Ow, harsh. <laughs> uh, what about you guys? Do you uh, did you guys watch The Office? Are you guys fans? I, it's I have not seen it. It's too awkward for me. I was That's, a big fan of Parks and Rec than I was The Office. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you skip uh, okay. the first season of Parks and Rec, it is amazing. The first season is absolute garbage. So I I understand your your pain in that last season because it does it feels like it's going to change. I did not finish it because of that last season. I got all oh. the way to there and didn't yeah, watch it. Yeah, get through it, out. man. Watch the watch the last half of that season and it 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 pays off. It's it's really okay. good. Um, I'm not going to say that my eyes weren't dry, but I'm also not going to say that they were. So um, it was good. It, it was very humid in the room, right? Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> and the sun was in my eyes uh, because Bob's sun glare uh, reflected off of something. And, and <laughs> no, was, that's, uh, 
that's some some asshole on a motorcycle that comes by. I thought he'd already left for the day. <laughs> <laughs> like it started, I'm like, Jesus, oh yeah, I'm still on. No, that was okay. When we first started, great anecdotal thing when we were doing our podcast is we were just using uh, full room uh, snowball mics, mm. and he had to open his windows in the summer just because it was so damn hot. And without fail, because we'd start at the same time every week. And God. ten minutes in, someone on a scooter would go by his window. He just hear, and we'd hear it coming, so we'd all just stop and wait for the pass. And be like Brittany, edit that out. <laughs> Get, this, this sounds like uh, aircraft on the flight line when they go to take off. Oh. You're in the middle of a conversation, and all of a sudden, the F twenty two or F sixteen starts taking off, and you're just like, "There's literally no point in talking until all four of them take <laughs> yep. off." So. Yeah, we're just exa- on pause yeah, exactly. for a minute you and a half. You put your conversation on hold for about two minutes. Yeah. Just like, well, <laughs> you walk away. <laughs> yeah, it's and and every, everybody understands it. You can always tell the new guys because they keep trying to talk, or they start talking again as soon as the first one goes, and then they got to stop when the second one starts. And she's like, you, "You're new." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll learn. Exactly. You can tell the new guys because they're over there like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still expect you to hear because they can hear themselves louder now because they got their ears plugged. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and they're also looking for uh, for a gallon of canine pee. Um, oh, so the, I'm assuming the 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 running. Uh, what what do we call them here in Eastern Kentucky? The snipe hunting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, of yeah. sorts. Oh yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. You got to get. Uh, I need thirty yards of uh, of uh, flight line. Flight line. Uh, I need a gallon of canine pee. Um, you need, you need, you need you, at Shaw. I don't know. I don't know if I uh, can. Have I told you the the trick at Shaw about the uh, the boots? Oh, uh, g- getting the boots NDI. Yeah, yeah. Because NDI was like a, a half mile to a mile trek down the road in the summertime in South Carolina. No sidewalks. So you had to walk on the asphalt, and you'd walk down there because you know you didn't have a car, right? Because you're brand new. So you'd walk down there and you'd get your boots NDI. Like they'd do an uh, X-ray inspection to see if they're cracked or whatever the steel toes. And of course they were, and they had to confiscate them. So you had to walk back to your uh, your shop, no boots, just just feet and socks on hot asphalt in South Carolina sun, and uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's that's how that worked. Um, <sighs> I could not. Do that. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so happy it's cold here now. Like it's got today's Holy high was like yes. today was like 55 degrees, and I was like, this is amazing. We're actually. So- so this is what this is one of the things about about Alaska that pisses me off. You ready? Mm-hmm. I'm making almost a hundred Jello shots. I don't have space in my fridge for a hundred Jello shots right now, and I realized that about halfway through because while well, I try to put the first batch in the fridge and they don't fit. So what do I do? It's been sub freezing all week long. I just put them sons of bitches on the back porch. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Right. <laughs> except we're, except we're having a heat wave. It was 46 degrees last night when I was making these Jello shots. <laughs> I- so. Like, no, that's what we're, our lows are getting to. And we're like, oh, no, I'm going to go roll around outside. It's so cool. <laughs> I, I heard, like, like our, if we're having a heat wave, it's 40-some degrees. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah, it's that, that really pissed me off. So, like, the one night that I need it cold outside, it's nice and warm. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'll be 46. Yeah, see, <laughs> here in New Mexico, like, it gets down to 55, and we're throwing, like, six blankets on the bed. <laughs> I was going to say, Kent, Kent's never seen 46. <laughs> yeah. it, it gets below I think that's, 50. like, the all-time low since I've lived here. It, it gets to 50, and Kent starts burning rooms in the house. Like, we, <laughs> Yeah, we, oh, yeah. We don't need yep. this bedroom. Just light that son bitch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need a new carpet anyway. Set that shit on fire. <laughs> you see him just huddled around... Uh, a, a, a fiery room with like a, a beer in his hand, just trying to get warm and feel warm inside. Yeah. Um, just got a <laughs> So now I'm looking for the cameras that you installed. In my house. <laughs> uh, Poodle puncher in the, in the chat room says it's ready to snow here. Uh, it snowed here. We got about an inch and a half, almost two inches of snow over the weekend. And then now of course it's all, it's all gone, but the grass is still green. Like the grass is still growing. It's snowing and the fucking grass is like, ah, whatever. <laughs> it's like um, yeah. the TMS episode when because uh, um, Ibit was talking about like it you know in Colorado it ra- it snowed what like last week or something like that and then now it's like it was like eighty degrees or something mm. so I, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I'm yeah. just like yeah, we're supposed to get eighties here in New Mexico this weekend, so uh, that that should be fun with or without thunderstorms. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they are you still busy being washed away. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's like dry as shit here now. Okay. Like, it's, like I have lizard skin. Every morning when I wake up, I go to work and I have to like bathe my hands in hand lotion because it's like I'm just like flaking off. Mm. It's just it's awful. Uh, so this is the part about having torrential rains in a desert, though. In the normal summer, like you have all this dust and stuff that kind of fills in the cracks. It actually makes the soil kind of soft. And, you know, you're walking along and you can see footprints. The rains come and they wash away all that dust. So all you have is this this cracked, hardened clay everywhere that doesn't like you can't dig in it or anything else. It's it's just. Yeah, I remember Palmdale squid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, um, yep. So Stranger Things comes back tomorrow or tonight. Dude. Nice. Oh my god. I am so <laughs> hyped for this. I it's right wait. time because I just finished Ozark yesterday. So I'm like, I need a new series. And I was like, oh shit, Stranger <laughs> Things is back. I was actually gonna build a Stranger Things wall f- as a decoration for the Halloween party and have you know the lights. I, I did all the research, everything else, but I couldn't get the parts in time. So um it, damn you Alaska for not having the proper LED strip. I could get the Arduino board and I could get everything else. I just couldn't get the lights here on time. So that'll be next mm-hmm. year's gimmick. This is this is my yeah. miss, missing gap in uh, my current cultural relevance. Yeah, <laughs> Don't worry, you're only like a year late. It's cool. It's cool. It's fine. It's right on time. My roommate's been like eight years, like The Office or something. <laughs> right. Still yeah. that, so. um, oh man, but I'm so excited about Stranger Things coming back. Have you guys seen the mobile game? It's no. on Android and iOS. I added it to my wish list, but I haven't gotten to actually try it out yet. But I've heard, oh, I've heard good things. Like it nothing is but good things. So great. It's like a classic like NES game. It's it's eight bit and it is perfect. It is one hundred percent free. There's no like micro purchases. There's no advertising. There's nothing. Oh, oh. It's one hundred percent free. And I got hooked on that thing as soon as I downloaded it. I beat the entire game. I hundred percent of the game. And I think <laughs> how long does that roughly take? Ten hours of play. Ten hours? Wow. Well, that explains yeah. why I've been catching up to you on uh, Hill Climb Racing too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, over the course of like we have, three, maybe we four no... days, I think I, I I logged ten hours of play on this damn thing and and finished it up. And, nice. And man, what a what a cool game! And the storyline, I think, is supposed to be like a a bridge between seasons one and two. Mm. So if you need something over the next day or so to. Kind so of, like, what you're saying is this would have been really great about three months ago when they started putting out trailers and shit for the new season when we were all you know itching. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. But it's so good. I still recommend everybody to you know go into your app stores and, and get this thing. It's it's a ton of fun. It's great. Mm. It's a, yeah. It's just it's fantastic. All right. So uh, question for our guests: um, What's the geekiest thing y'all did this week? Yes. Uh... Uh, I'm, well, we I'm debating between two things. So, I'm like, ours is another dated. Uh, we finally started. Uh, I want to say reading, but listening to the audio book oh. of Ready Player One. Yes. Oh, a task I have yet to do myself, even though I promised Kent to do it by the end of the year. <clears throat> yeah. Calling myself on. Time. Narrated. Dude, by you can Will kill Wheaton. it in a week. It's it's that good. It is so. Well, so apparently good. I'll be I'll be laying laid up for six weeks or four weeks or whatever. So I might just. <laughs> You'll we'll have time. But it's yep. amazing. That's we're about halfway through. We, I, she's had it for years on years. Audible. Like I don't even know. But. Yeah, a, a long ass time. And then finally, we had to drive down to Tennessee, and it was like, you know what? That's a good time to finally chow down on this. And the there and back, we got through roughly half of it, and now I'm sitting here jonesing to finish it, but I can't do it without <laughs> her. So I'm like, oh <laughs> god, we need another road trip or something so I can finish this book. Like on got the way to, home for yeah. Thanksgiving, we're gonna be listening to it. So. And one of the great it. things about this book is, you know, and not to spoil anything at all, uh, th- th- this book came out a, a few years ago, uh, probably what, four or five years ago, something like that. I like that, yeah. Decade. The mm-hmm. current state of VR and where we can see we're going with VR, <sighs> uh, the Oasis, I can see as a very real, tangible thing in like yes. the, within yeah. the next 20 years. Mm. So the weird uh, thing is, when I think of that, I think of the fact I read Ready Player One and uh, Snow Crashed, basically like back to back. Yes. And so like when I think VR, those are the two visions of it in my head. Yeah. Like we're advancing so quickly in that in that realm that um, I I think like a fully immersible world that we live in is a 
like like we're, we're getting there man we're on uh, the fast train to that so just like vampires after the whole twilight debate i am just done with vr until uh, you know it's it's the whole thing of i don't want to know about the labor just show me the baby <laughs> right I'm right done with this yeah well read ready player one because it's going to show you the baby <laughs> yeah that's where we're going yeah it's well, true, there, yeah. Well, there we go um <laughs> what, who else who else uh, got something geeky this week uh so mine is uh either uh my roommate finally wait 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 wait, wait 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 he's got two things kent he's got two things okay so I want uh, Bob. I want you to give give us uh, one word from each one, and we are yeah. going to wager on which one was more geeky, and then you'll tell us which one, and we'll decide who 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 wins. Let's, it's my 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 problem is I'm not sure which is the geek here, but well, I have no a, no I have that, a, that, that, that's that's fine. That's for us to decide and you to narrate. Um, <laughs> okay. We we just need one key word from each one. Not a phrase, uh, a word. Destiny. Okay. Uh, D&D. Okay, so Destiny versus <laughs> D&D. Who's got what? I'm going to go with D&D. Ah, oh, damn it. That's what I was going to go with. Okay, um, can we can we both choose the same well, answer? Well, there's, or... there's, there's four other, five other people to guess. I mean, it's not like we... He didn't give us five options. He gave us two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, I'm, I'm going with D&D on this. Yeah. I'm going to say D&D because I know his group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, well... So uh, so we all went D and D then, right? Like it was uh, unanimous. D and D is probably the geekier one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The well, you you don't uh, have to tell us. Destiny we just was, told you. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Destiny was just that my roommate browbeat me into buying the PC version finally because I am of the PC master race. Mm. And uh, and this is Destiny two. Hmm. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I discovered that I have to update my drivers, and so like, had we not been doing this tonight, I would have been going like. All right, let's uninstall everything, get back into work. So, like, so that's one level of geeky. The other uh, has been that uh, uh, I've been trying to arrange a uh, bizarre trial for a D and D campaign that I'm playing with some friends. Uh, the uh, there's a long campaign that's been going through a Castle Ravenloft setting, and uh, one of them shoots a they think it's a raven. It ends up being a were raven. It falls to the ground dead as a person. And I'm trying to arrange a trial for them now. Mm. Oh, that sounds some, some, compelling. Some genuine narrative storytelling going on there. I like the, it. The, uh, the, the phrase that came out of that was because uh, he kept running out. I guess they, as I t- ex- ex- described them, dragging him off in chains. Uh, it's like, like, I only shot a bird. And one of the players go, but you killed a man. <laughs> and oh. we, we were kind of like, I need that as a T-shirt. That's like I want right. to. A small <laughs> that sounds great. Lego. Here you go, guys. Yeah, that, that's that's a that's a starting line for a book right there. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That's epic. yeah. That is yeah, epic. Record scratch. Uh, yeah. You're probably all wondering how we got here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Ad Dragon in in Twitch chat wanted to point out that D and D does not mean designated driver. Uh, no. no, it does not. So it can for us sometimes. But when we're around, <laughs> yes, it should probably. <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah, you probably need one of those. Um, so real quick, uh, my geekiest thing this week was publishing my, uh, my uh, live streaming my publishing process oh, yeah. on uh, on our Twitch channel, and that took about three hours. It was a lot of fun, uh, and, and it kind of went off in a lot of different directions because at one point we were just managing uh, the Twitch backend on on how to get. How to get the little bots to work and stuff like that with uh, W Scottis One and uh, M Beam helping out and uh, yeah that was great and a lot of fun and if you want to know how Ritual Misery is published go check that out because it's it's oh, done yeah. in, and in if painstaking you care about timing. Product, and if you care about the finished product, you can go to patreon.com slash Ritual Misery and uh, give a fuck and give us a buck. Uh, another way that you can help us out is go to twitch.tv slash ritual misery podcast and follow us there uh i made uh, it, i made it even easier we have a bitly oh, oh. oh bitly bit.ly slash rmp live beautiful mm-hmm. and that nice. where does that take us it takes you to the twitch page you can hit smash that that like button there you go uh <laughs> not the yeah. like button the follow button 
or the follow yeah that's a uh, follow i think would work better for what we're trying to do here yeah yeah um but yeah uh do those th- two things hit us up on patreon.com slash ritual misery and twitch.tv slash ritual misery podcast or go to bit.ly slash rmp live uh that will help us out a ton it's, uh, it's, say, it's all the a, cool kids are all yeah. the cool kids are donating to the patreon I do. Wait, that's not good evidence. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, it is time. We've been holding off long enough, I think. Uh, what what beers you guys drinking? That what, what, what y'all drinking? Mm-hmm. Um, which one? Because I've downed one, and we're almost done with beer two. Um, I started with Stones Enjoy by ten thirty one seventeen IPA. Mm. It was delicious. It's basically every hop flavor you can find crammed into one beer. Mm. <laughs> like it is, it's citrusy, it's dank, it's kind of hazy. Like it's but balanced, every, but still balanced. It has a strong bitter note because of the after effect of all that. So if you're not in the IPAs, you're not going to like it. That and sounds about fucking amazing. With, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just now finishing up uh, Brew Dogs uh, Hazy Jane. Their New England IPA, but Brewdog is a Scottish brewery who just opened up a brewery in Ohio, like they're right outside oh. Columbus. They're like two hours away from us. Not so, just not just a brewery. They're also opening up a little a beer hotel, hotel that is soon yeah. to open, which we are anxiously awaiting to see if we can get in there and maybe host some kind of Diamond Club meetup or something at yeah. the beer hotel. <laughs> Oh uh, hell yeah. yes! Just let me know. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Uh, and uh, Brew Dog, like they're the uh, they're the ones that had the TV show. Yes. A couple years, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Like very cool. beer in, That's awesome. In uncomfortable I'm drinking places. a an Imperial Java Stout from the Santa Fe oh, Brewery. I don't know if you that. guys can see this. It says "Not for use with donuts." Oh, <laughs> I so. I've never had it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's not true because donuts go with donuts go with almost everything. Uh, the only thing better than donuts going with stuff is is uh bacon. Mm. Ooh. Related Ooh. to that, I'm going to a donut beer release this weekend, <laughs> having it brought to me for a red a red velvet cake donut <laughs> imperial stout. Good oh. Lord! Oh my God! That's... I'm trying to remember who it was. A few years ago, I had a beer from a brewery. Uh, uh, who does the uh, the? Oh gosh, what is it called? The donut something. Voodoo donut. Like a like a bacon and donut stout. Uh, evil twin. It might have. I think it was evil twin. Mm. Uh, they do that was an Imperial interesting donut. beer. That's that's incredible. Uh. On my end, um, I've got the Pacos IPA from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Headed out there a little bit and brought some back. Uh, award winning standard IPA. I think it won in the, what was it? Strong, uh, American style strong pillow category in 2011 at GABF. Quite tasty. Smooth. Bitter. Right on. I, I have uh, one that uh, I was told I had to try. Um, <laughs> it's an Alaskan Heritage Coffee Brown. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and uh, oh, wow. I, I was told by some uh, some assholes on the internet that I needed to try this because <laughs> uh, apparently it's delicious, and I haven't actually those... tried it yet. I just popped the top just a few minutes. Oh, ago. okay. So oh, giving okay. it, we giving it a escape. little bit of a chance to breathe. Just, yeah. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this. Uh, I did over pour this a little bit, but one one advantage that you get when you over pour a beer and you get a lot of head, you get a lot of aroma fill the room, and uh, yeah. I'm enjoying a nice chocolatey. <laughs> Uh, incredibly malty aromas coming out of this. This, uh, I mean, this, this, this tastes like ice, like chilled coffee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like yeah. a, like a Georgia coffee, like an yeah. iced coffee. Like this is holy shit. This is good. <laughs> nice. We told you. I'm going to see how this, uh, this Java stout is. We're all having coffee. <laughs> yeah, we're all yeah. drinking coffee beers. For, for once, yeah. actually, like the one this is like coffee. a, uh, this is like a, a like a, a coffee that's got the uh, you know that like the cocoa creamer that you can get and in, in, uh, mix in a coffee. Uh, that's that's pretty much exactly what this thing tastes like. So not mm. as stout, if you will, not as stout as I would prefer my stouts to be. Mm. Uh, it's a little it's a little heavy on the sweet end, um, but but still tasty. 
Still tasty. Uh, yeah, Ken's not a fan of sweet head. <laughs> well, well, I mean, let's not get into my personal life. <laughs> Very good. Cool. Um, well, I did grab uh, I grabbed an assortment of beer and a cooler next to me. I'm just like pulling it out, going, "All right, what we got today?" Um, but I grabbed pretty much. <laughs> but I happened to grab out a uh, Fall City Kentucky Common, uh, which uh, if you're not familiar with the Kentucky Common, well, one, it's almost gone. And uh, two, uh, it's delicious. It's a native Kentucky style beer that no one in Kentucky makes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The so oldest. Bob, let me ask you because I there. I'm not familiar with Kentucky Common. Is that is that the same as like a California Common, like a steam beer? It's not a steam beer, but it's um, it is in that sort of ale category. Um, um, so when... Casey knows more than me. I I'm kind of a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I like style. Case I like this on the what is a Kentucky Common. I like putting things in boxes. Uh, so a Kentucky Common was sort of a style that developed out of the um, rich limestone water that we have here in uh, Kentucky, especially the parts near uh, Louisville. Um, they've got some some kind of cave activity up through Louisville. there. So uh, it's a little bit darker ale, and the the sort of uh, the calcium carbonate, all of the extra buffers that are in the, not to get too much into water chemistry, but all the extra buffers that are in that water can ho- tolerate a darker beer. And so it's a little bit darker version, but it also has corn in it, which gives it sort of this corny kind of flavor. Um, and so it's an ale that's got a little bit of corn flavor. It's just a little bit darker, sort of like the, uh, I guess close to like the, the, Alaskan amber style, maybe close to that would be probably yeah. the closest uh, yeah, comparison. Would, hmm. Yeah. Now, normally when I think of corn in a beer, I'm thinking of it as an adjunct. But is this like this is purposely put there to to enhance flavor? Yeah. So it, it, it you get a corn flavor instead of just lightening up the beer and lightening up the flavor, which is why most of these big brewers use it. Um, you actually add the corn in there to create a corn flavored beer uh, with that. It was also pretty abundant. It was one of those things that you used barley enough to get the enzyme action going so that you can convert starch to sugars, but you added corn because you had a bunch of it laying around and, and it was going to go bad unless you did something with it, so you pickled it or made beer. Well, or this bourbon. is like a preview for our audio-only podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, what, that's what I was going to say. If, if, you're, if you're enjoying this conversation right here, this is this is what their podcast is. This is how it, how it goes down. They 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 throw around some ideas and they talk about beer and, and they get into some of the, the skinny on, on how it's done. Um, my question is, how did how did have a drink start? Like what was the the impetus? What was the the catalyst for saying, hey, let's weird, do that? It all stems from Brittany and Bob. It was their <laughs> brainchild. I, yeah. I was like, more Brittany. More of just me going, Brittany going, Bob, I want to do a podcast. All right, what do we like? <laughs> yeah, that, well, I, oh, so yeah, I, so it started as just a podcast, not as a beer podcast. The, well, the yeah. idea, I mean. Then yeah. we were like, you know what? We're we're and that was when Casey was like heavily home brewing, and 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 we were just like, you know, we should do. what well, we have this idea, and we don't know that much about beer. We were just getting into it, so we were like, let's do this and have the idea be that other people can learn along with us. So we just everybody just follows us on this journey of learning about beer and we decided to go with have a drink though instead because it's actually not Why just about beer yourself? covered spirits and um <laughs> wine it? and we're because also gonna- i like whiskey <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are all from kentucky bourbon. we like our bourbon <laughs> uh but we also are going to cover at some point like uh, the history of tea and and you know um winter drinks like hot cocoa and things like that so um we're you know we're, we try to stay as broad as we can but um but yeah we came up with the idea and that was then, a mistake when we did the episode of ales and uh lo- ales and loggers oh god that was so long i was sick <laughs> in that one so that was i think casey that was before casey was a full-time host so he just filled in for me and i like passed out and they're like i think we just recorded a three-hour episode <laughs> <laughs> it's like really long um oh well i mean to be perfectly honest ales and loggers means everything in beer minus like three yeah, yeah. <laughs> which we at the time we weren't that aware of because that was one of our first episodes <laughs> wow so, uh, yeah 
But yeah, we we asked uh, Bob and I came up with the idea basically, and then we asked my husband <laughs> Chris to join in. And then, of course, just recently, um, after about a year, I think we after the New Year's Eve stream. After, yeah, after, after just after New Year's Eve, we yep. asked Casey to be a permanent uh, host. So because he was doing a homebrew segment that was like quarterly, and then after you know the reaction we got from doing New Year's Eve last year, our first said, hey, stream, by the way. Yeah, that was our first video stream. Yeah. And that's when we said, hey, Casey, you want to be a permanent host? And he was like, all right. And here we are. I got asked to the dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I then, think uh, that's great. I, I think Casey really adds an element. Like I, When I think about the have a drink dynamic, I think of, of Chris and Brittany as kind of like the anchors of the show. Bob <laughs> is kind of like the uh, color Dancing commentary. Monkey. <laughs> and Casey as kind of the this like me, the science Leatherman. nerd expert of the group. <laughs> Kent, Kent has basically nailed how I describe our dynamic. Except <laughs> I don't go, I don't use color commentary. I say dancing monkey. Um, it, it, <laughs> yeah. it is. It's, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was I particularly it nicely. <laughs> I, I particularly I particularly enjoy your your dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, welcome to our episodes. When you start getting into them, we did a particularly, uh, I don't know, hazardous, you could call it, thing when we did Prohibition. Oh, so, Lord. So Bob um, is a history major, so we cut him loose for deep dives every now and then, and he basically writes us a three-episode stretch. Dissertation. And, and we'll record it all in one sitting. There may or may not have been footnotes. Like... Six to seven hours straight. So by like a Sunday. By the third episode, we're just hammered. And it's just us <laughs> slurring through the script the best we can. Like it's really funny because I, I listen I listened to that after the fact and went, okay, how did this how did this end up? Midway through, like in the second episode, you start to see the tilt more yeah. towards oh, yeah. and we're like But like we're kind of at that balance, like, okay, we're kind of loose, but it's fine. Get to that third episode, it's just all right. <laughs> let me let me just say this. Ken Burns only took five and a half hours to go through Prohibition, and we take six. Because so. Ken Burns doesn't know how to close. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's oh awesome. Oh, jeez. Uh, um, wow. So, what, what do you guys see as the future of the show? Are you guys just going to like maintain the vibe that you guys have going for now and just see where it goes? Or do you guys have like a, like a grand scheme of what's to come? Uh, I, uh, I can Brittany? answer, I can answer this for you. I can actually answer this for you. Um, as it is right now, uh, Brittany handles all the, all the actual technical work while, uh, while Casey does like all the, uh, the live production kind of stuff. So, so what they're going to do is those <laughs> two are actually going to build up a dependency so hard that they're both just going to randomly disappear and 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 just see what happens as an experiment uh, while they're taste testing around the globe. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, that'll work. Um, okay, now I'm curious management. about what their answer is. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, you 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 asked yeah. the question. You didn't like really direct it anywhere. I had to give my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Brittany, uh, what do you, where, where do you think the show is going? Um. Well, I think we. The goal is to keep keep doing what we're doing but like get it more um more structured so um our actually our goal by the end of the year by the new year's eve stream uh will be to have a patreon and um also with that we already have a new logo but we haven't revealed it yet we were going to do that with that stream launch as well um we okay. so we recommissioned uh len peralta to do new album art um so everything's kind of got a refreshed look we're, we're gonna have like upgraded stuff and we're hoping um as some of the patreon goals to also get uh, kind of a more structured schedule um have it more more clear cut versus with the audio and the video podcast both um because they're they're kind of two separate entities right now and we want to the schedule is kind of wonky <laughs> right now yeah, but we want to have it more more clear cut and, and we're just hoping to go and just keep going in this direction and and get more into the homebrew, more into the science, and then more into every kind of drink, I guess. <laughs> We're going to take right. advantage of the drink part. <laughs> no, yeah, that I is awesome. That uh, sounds like you you guys are really going in a good direction. I do have a question from the Twitch chat, though. MB wants to know <laughs> who handles beard management. <laughs> that uh, would be um, all, him. <laughs> all me and 
they are not sponsoring, but most of my products do come come from Texas Beard Company. So it's, <laughs> it's like an alpha um, beard. You've got a yeah. You gotta so have Texas the beard, beard Company uh, uh, sponsor opportunity right here. Uh, definitely a, a <laughs> glowing you know, advertisement for your products. It's it's, it's better yeah. than the the Beard Club stalking him in. Uh, in Ohio and Northern Kentucky. No, okay. Yeah. There is a Greater He's, Cincinnati um, the Beard Barons. Beard Barons, and they they raise money for charity all around town, and they go and compete at the World Championships and like the World Championship uh, for beer and must beer beard and mustache <laughs> was in Austin this year, so it was in the U.S. and they all flew down there for that. But they've been harassing me for years. They find me anywhere, like walking in the front door. They just like slam on the brakes and start screaming, hey, 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 you, you, you. We're out hiking in the middle of the woods and random people start. <laughs> yes. Coming. Hey, so do you want to but- join the Beard Barons out shopping? The, 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 hey, we're here to recruit people for the Beard Barons. I'm like, Jesus Christ, leave me alone. Uh, you, I, the I, audio I, only I listeners, in case you haven't figured it out, uh, Chris has the most glorious beard that I've <laughs> ever seen with my own two eyes in real life. Thank it you. is uh, it so, is at the measurement of sea captain, I believe. Yes, uh, <laughs> epic sea captain. I I think would be the correct term. So what's the next level after that? What's what comes after epic sea captain? Uh, I'd have to consult wizard. consult the chart. Is it wizard? It, yes, it's like grand wizard. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe not grand wizard. Let's not. Let's stay away from that term. <laughs> yeah, it goes wizard, grand wizard, then new ZZ top member. <laughs> Ah, okay. Let's yeah. Let's skip right to ZZ Top. <laughs> that awkward in between time. Uh, and maybe if it Hillbilly, were Billy Bigfoot it, Hippie. It, 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 <laughs> oh, I, I can for the audio listeners give you a little maybe rub it on the microphone. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they... oh, oh! Hear the glory. Listen so, to the glory. Someone right now is getting off on the sound of that beard rubbing on a microphone. There's some. And there's some ASMR going on right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, a companion show to have a drink. We could have the the beard ASMR show. Uh, <laughs> I have. I've yet to pitch it. Um, we have a, a local podcast around here because we focus uh, on our audio show mostly with national breweries, and we have a local podcast around here that folk focuses nothing but local stuff, and it's uh, Cincy Brewcast. And when I was on there, I was like, no, we need to turn it to Cincy Beardcast. Whenever I'm on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> um, so my next question is for all four of you, not at the same time. Apparently that doesn't work very good. <laughs> I get confused. Because um, we answer. will answer all at the same time. <laughs> uh, I if, think I told someone in the chat, we're more of a hive mind than, if, than individuals if, anymore. If, if you had to label your favorite drink, Without restriction, your favorite drink, what would it be? Casey? Cucumber mojito. Okay. Answer. Bob? <laughs> no, I, I knew what his would be. Um, you don't know what yours is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go to somebody else. Give me a, give me a second. Um, well, I what can go to this? Buffalo Trace bourbon uh, straight because, well, for one, it's absolutely fucking delicious. And we got married at the distillery. So yeah. a lot of, and I have Aww. a bottle uh, signed by the master distiller that I'm waiting for a special opportunity to pop that open. Like never. Uh, <laughs> excellent. What about you, Brittany? I, I'm trying to think of like the specific. Okay. So it's, it's a between two things that are actually similar, like <laughs> very closely related. So one is a specific drink. So, um, our local brewery that anyone who listens to our show, I'm sorry, because I'm probably very tired of this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what brewery you're talking about. <laughs> Bob, give it away. Yeah. Uh, our local brewery called Braxton has a, um, a beer that's actually not out all the time, but it's called um, it's a dead blow tropical stout, but they have a specific version of it that has um, their cold brew coffee brewed in with it. So it's, it's a tropical stout with, coffee and it's just dead it's called dead blow with starter that is my favorite beer but mm. far as other styles is are concerned i really like porters like the darker the better and like a good smoked porter because i love smoked beers like i'm so pumped for our audio episode we're recording this weekend but um about smoked beers but uh i yeah Spoiler I'd, alert. I'd go with 
like a smoked porter, I think. All right. Okay. So I think you ready, got, Bob? I, I'm ready. One is a great white whale that I can never have again. Casey knows what I'm talking about. LL El Coco. It's a coconut cream ale from uh, uh, Cigar, Cigar City. City Brewing. They'll never make it again, except when they did, they made it nitro and made it worse. Yeah. But the one I can actually have, if I have to settle, it's uh, it's KBS, Kentucky Breakfast Stout from Founders. Uh, mm. I hoard oh, that like a dragon hoarding God. gold. Yeah, Ken yes. got to have that. Yeah, at Nerdtacular. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we didn't let it warm up so, like we should have, so but we were drunk, and that's just what happens. <laughs> We had so much beer at Nerdtacular. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, if you were at Nerdtacular, didn't come by. There was an open invitation and a massive bottle share. Mm. So much yeah. beer. That was such a good time. Oh, my gosh. All right, Kent, uh, your turn. Um, oh, wow. Uh. <laughs> All right. I would, okay, so this is a really tough one for me because I, I switch. Like, my taste buds kind of rotate. Uh, my my favorite thing to drink on a recurring regular basis has pretty much stayed the same for the last like two to three years, and that's my uh, my old trusty Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Uh, mm. It's oh, just a perfect to go to beer. Um, but probably the most enjoyment that I got out of a single beer was Vesflater and Twelve at mm. at the uh, Vesflater and um, Abbey. Mm. Uh, you say, your travels make me so jealous because you've been to so many of the Trappists. So oh. jelly. So, uh, so some of the some of the ideas from the chat room. Uh, uh, Jotman enjoys uh, some Zima. Oh. Um, Crunchy is going with the Crispin. Oh, yeah. And I believe it was Jotman that said, uh, and I and I quote here. Well, M Beam in the chat room. Um, uh, smoked beers every day. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to, my, my favorite, Kent, do you know what my favorite drink of all time is? Uh, I know you're, uh, a, a big fan of Dos Equis Amber. Yeah. Also the, Alaskan Amber. Uh, the, the Dos Equis Amber would be my favorite beer. Okay. Uh, uh, on tap, not out of the bottle. The bottle kind of ruins it a little bit, but out of the tap is delicious. Yeah. Um, the, your favorite drink probably involves soju. Mm, um, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. some <laughs> Dr. McGillicuddy. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh my, my favorite drink of all time would be cherry soju. Like it, cherry it's, soju. Got it. It's, okay. uh, it, it tastes like Kool-Aid and it, 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 it gives you a uh, heaven, heaven in the brain. Um, so <laughs> cherry yeah, soju. until you overdo it and you're hungover for three days. <laughs> what, you know what cures soju hangovers? Uh, more soju, soju? more soju. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Hair of the dog. Um, like a yeah, and uh, it, actually, uh, uh, in the chat room, they're bringing up iced tea. Uh, they're in, in Korea. They had this place that specialized in iced tea soju, and mm. that was that was stupid delicious. Uh, and I thought about making it for the Halloween party and trying to figure out, you know, get the the. Oh my god, that stuff was so good. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, soju is just a delicious thing. Well, th- let me caveat that. It is a delicious mixer. You can mix anything with soju and make it absolutely amazing. Yes. Uh, straight soju tastes is like, like the devil's asshole. It tastes like, tastes like vodka. <laughs> tastes like a bad vodka. Yeah, which um, vo- yeah, bad vodka is yeah. the devil's asshole. So uh, have, have you guys had soju, like, uh, like a, a genuine I, soju? I do not believe so. Like... 80% sure I've had it had it once or twice. And I'm like, like I I'm feel like I have my brain episode on Soju. All right. Do the show duck. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. And, and like I said, like it's, it's really harsh by itself, but it is the absolute best mixer. There, there so may good. have to be a, uh, a, 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 a flavor sample or a yeast sample or, Something sent your way with some genuine no shit combat bottle <laughs> soju. You into having a PO box that oh. um, brewing supplies and yeast samples could be mailed to. Mm. So that's another thing. Um, not to hijack too much of the show, but they there was a news story that just came out this week that there is new legislation being passed through Congress currently that should allow individuals to ship beer through the USPS. Mm. Oh, so oh, we'll see how that news. turns out. Not going to help so much with the soju, but uh, that'll happen anyway. Um, well, uh, <laughs> ship alcohol. Sorry, I said I said beer, but ship alcohol was the uh, the key. So yeah, 
Hey, uh, uh, there's there's one thing that we forgot to do, and it's gonna be a little skewed tonight. Obviously, I can't. I'm gonna, I'm assuming you can adjust directly, but it goes something like this. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for hot takes on the Ritual Misery podcast. So, all right. So I prepared uh, hot takes, thinking that we had one guest. However, <laughs> Amos did give me the the assignment uh come up with as many hot takes about beer as you can which was like the only clue i had of who the who tonight's guest was going to be um uh, so it, i did not it, prepare did it, any rules for how the game will go with multiple players did it click um, right away when you heard beer and you went oh it's one of those guys one of those jerks yeah well i actually it did kind of cross my mind i was like i wonder if it could be one of the have a drink people well, yes, oh. yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> uh, Underpromise right, so, and overdeliver. It's what I try to do all the time. I usually <laughs> I usually fuck that up and reverse it, but whatever. <laughs> all right, so I think what I'm gonna do, uh, I prepared. Let's see. Let, let's see how I I'm see do nine it. there. Is it nine or ten? Maybe eleven. I can't well, count. I, I prepared to, there's eleven things here. You know what, Amos? If you could throw one more into the mix i can give three to each person oh. okay. so i think i think the way we'll do this is uh, are, are you guys familiar with the, with the hot take segment do you know how it goes yes I, i'm not as much okay so so basically the way it goes is that i'm going to throw out a topic and then you are going to say whatever's on your mind about that topic you can rant you can rave you can praise you can whatever it can be one word it can be Whatever, however long you want to go. However, when you hear that sound of the record scratching, that's your your indication that it's time to stop talking about that and receive your next topic. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So what I want to do well, is I want to start with Bob. Okay. So you go. All right. Yeah. Go. Go. Bob. Go across the top, down to Casey, and then come back up. That works. Okay. Because that's that's the way it is in the uh, production part of the show. So. <laughs> Makes it yeah, easy. Okay, yeah. Okay. So that works. All right. So Bob's Follow gonna get heart. three, and then uh, Chris uh, is gonna get uh, Brittany uh, three, then Casey three. Apparently, you uh, you need to increase your uh, record scratch sound. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. Like actually scratch. I want, I want I want you to actually scratch a record. I know you got a phonograph over there. All right. Was that any? Uh, did that increase it? Sure. <laughs> Well, the important thing is, can our guests hear it? Uh, yes, I can hear it. They can hear we'll it this in bit. post. There's an audible. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. No. It's, makes for good I radio. Not, if yeah. not, I will. Uh, we'll have to fix this later. But I, I will just yell at you to stop talking and get your next. <laughs> no, shut up! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> All right, Bob. Here we go. Are you ready? Sure. Let's do this. All right, Trappist monks, am I right? Oh my god, the fucking holy land of assholes keeping their beer from me for being <laughs> typically hundreds, if not thousands, of miles away. I uh, just want to drink it. Damn it, hey, Bob. Right. Uh, Bud Light, am I right? Fucking horse shit. <laughs> the only thing worse than Bud Light is fucking Bud Light lime. Oh god, I. Oh, that you picked the right one to give to me. I'm <laughs> the, filled the three, with the holy three rage. Tier, the three tier system, am I right? Oh my god. No. <laughs> no. Fuck those assholes. It's like all three of these were perfect for him. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sorry, all right, all right. Uh Chris, what is craft anyway? Am I right? Whoa, there is such a huge thing. You picked the right person. Craft is such a big thing. There's a great video you've got to look up right now. There is a campaign from uh, the Brewers Association right now to buy AB InBev, take Craft back. A craft community is going to band together doing the largest crowdfunding campaign ever to raise the two, what is it? Two billion. Two billion dollars to buy AB InBev. And we're, instead of getting bought up, the craft industry is going to buy the big guys. <laughs> All right. Barnyard yeast. Am I right? Oh, it is just the tits. That is flat out what I've got to say. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, the fresh hop smell. Am I right? Oh, God. That is right there with the tits. Just makes me. Oh, it's just spraying everywhere. Love it. Oh, those fresh hops. Just rub them in my face. All right, Brittany. Oh, oh. Home brewing. Am I right? <laughs> oh, God. Home brewing. Well, <laughs> Brittany. Brittany, home brewing. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> home brewing is so much fun. We actually got to do that for the first time with Casey, uh, what, a few weeks ago? So that I, I loved it. Um, it was very sciencey, but I got really drunk, so I actually don't remember some of the pieces. <laughs> All right. Draft can or bottle, am I right? Uh, can is, is way better for um, storing beer, but um, unless you're going to cellar it, and then the bottle is better, but green bottles are the devil. Uh, AB InBev buying rate beer. Am I right? Uh, we no longer use rate beer because of that very reason, because AB InBev is the actual source of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Casey, roasted malts. Am I right? Oh, my goodness. So roasted malts. Great if you do light chocolatey. If you start roasting malt or putting too much in there, these dark beers, they get too acrid, too much of that that roasty, toasty flavor. You can't taste that good caramel malt. You can't taste the yeast. It just kind of overpowers everything. Uh, yeah. Thumbs down. All right. Casey, Jim Cook, am I right? Jim Cook. Who's Jim Cook from uh, Sam Adams, right? <laughs> Yeah, yes. greatest American yeah. treasure, yes. asshole. Right, listen, so big thing about Jim Cook is he thinks that you can't get drunk if you take a tablespoon of yeast with every uh, every beer you drink. You take a tablespoon of yeast with you, you can't get drunk. I'm surprised this guy hasn't got caught with the DUI yet. <laughs> and finally, Casey, the Ritual Misery podcast. Am I right? Oh, my goodness. So here's the thing with you guys. We uh, we really enjoy that uh, you are in two different areas, but with us being here in in Kentucky and and right on well all in Kentucky actually, I think we need to go on location because you know the two locations that I have not had a beer in <laughs> yet. I'm trying to hit every state. Yeah, I've got two states. One is Alaska. The other one I believe is down south somewhere. New Mexico, perhaps? <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> out of that entire... <laughs> he doesn't Maybe know it was anymore. too far out of the way. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> out of... I've got probably... I've got the Northeast, and then I've got... in the West, those two states left. So we need to do a... a have a drink, Ritual Misery, in your house. Uh, yo, I got I got the spare room. Like, we, we can make that happen. Hell That's, yes. I'm we down. can make that happen. That would be was, absolutely amazing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the final record scratch here. Um, that was by far the longest hot takes, the longest 60-second right. game that we have ever played. <laughs> um, that was that Not was bad. pretty great, guys. Thank you so much for playing along. Um, so, I, I, wow. I, if you've got a second, I do have a game for you two. Oh. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh-oh. Um, so, uh, I sure. have went back into your history on Untapped. <laughs> oh, and I've crap. picked one beer for each of you, and Ooh. I've got your review and when you checked in, and I want to know what beer that was. Uh oh, oh crap! Oh, this be this be <laughs> oh. the, 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 here's the bad part. Okay, it's gonna be just as hard for Kent as it would for me because I have so few check ins, <laughs> and Kent has so many. But I'm not as into beer, so like the beers that I like, I really like. It was Kent is like, I want to try them all. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So, well, see, I, right. my, my check in count isn't all that high, I don't think, on Untapped, but I'm pretty vague with my descriptions when I rate them on Untapped. Whereas opposed to like rate beer, I would be, you know, I'd, I'd explore the aromas and flavors a little bit more. Back in the day, uh, of rate yeah, beer. I'm looking forward to this. All right, Casey. Okay. What do we got? So, who wants to go first? Oh, definitely Kent. Okay, okay. Cool. yeah, I guess me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kent, looks like you gave this beer a 4.5 around January 29th of this year. Mm. You say, this beer got me a free t-shirt from Sam Calagione, and I'd love to tell you the story. Oh, that's that's an easy one, actually. That is Dogfish Head 90-Minute IPA. Ding, mm. ding, ding. Good awesome. I was going to say, Sam Calagione kind of 
kind of made that one a little easier. <laughs> Chris did yeah. comment down below it and said, I would love to hear that story sometime. So maybe post show we could get that one. <laughs> oh, definitely. And yes. This, yes. Perfect. And then Amos. So I've got on yours from March 10th of 2017. South a by. beautiful head. <laughs> South by. <laughs> okay. At the Flying Saucer Drought Emporium. Uh, or draft emporium, however you want to say the word. Uh, beautiful head, sweet aroma, and just enough bite to keep you from chugging it down. With a 4.5, you got the America Stout Badge and the Wheel of Style Badge. Oh, I remember this beer, and I don't remember the name of it. Man. I remember it very specifically because I wasn't going to order it, and then um, uh, uh, Jaime Ruiz's uh, wife o- ordered it, and I was like, oh, that looks delicious. And then I got one, and then Stacy got one. Like I remember the beer, I just don't remember the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I do you give up? Uh, I, I I do. There's there, there's uh, during South by you could say, hey, where were you in at South by? And I'd be like, mm, Texas. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so that was Left Hand Brewing Company's Milk Stout Nitro. Oh yeah. See, yeah. see. Oh, I, yes. God damn it! I I almost should have known that too. Oh yes. Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it, yeah, because I remember. Yep, 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 yep. Such a good beer. <laughs> such a good damn beer. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, still is. Um, that is. Thanks, guys, for playing along. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, uh, that was pretty good. Ken, I think we have another stinger to go to, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, found it. <laughs> So this is Amos. I think this is a first. Our guests are going to talk about a TED talk that neither one of us have watched. Right. I didn't even know it was there until after you'd already abandoned it five minutes in. So uh... yeah. So like ten minutes before <laughs> showtime, a TED talk appeared in the show notes. I was like, oh shit! I better start watching it. I got like four and a half minutes into hey, uh, it. R- real quick, uh, in chat room, uh, M Beam says Odules. Uh, so Odules is is like um, <laughs> near. It 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 it's it's like going down on your sister. It tastes the same, but it just ain't right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's still alcohol in that. It's just not a real measurable amount. It's, it's nothing you're going to tell <laughs> yeah, it's anybody like a about. one percent or some crap. Um, and yeah. then uh, uh, he also said that I thought the purpose of drinking was to forget what you're drinking, and that's not far from the truth. So uh, <laughs> that's why I was for, like, yeah, forget no. everything else. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> well, no. The first couple of things you drink, you want to remember that you got to pace it that way. So when you get like four and five drinks deep, you got to make sure it's something you really don't care about because Once- you don't. <laughs> Once tequila yeah, that's gets where it, involved, you want to make sure you don't remember anything. Fridge, you've got a couple Bud Lights sitting back there. Once you get tanked, you don't give a shit anymore. Yeah. That's when you drink those. Oh, and by the yeah, way, I, I got a I got a ooh from Crunchy, which means that uh, yeah, that's that's almost like a badge of honor to to have gross. Yeah, that takes a drink. lot. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> this episode <laughs> took a weird twist somewhere. Um, yeah, so where where are the episode names coming from? That little piece. <laughs> <laughs> like suggestions just from that One more um, country said, guys, so you guys watched sam caligioni reinventing beer tell us a little bit about that talk so uh, sam caligioni gives this talk it's about 12 minutes long which is i think out of all the, the ted talks that i really like i think the ones that are sub sub 10 minute mark is are usually my favorite but um the because you kind of get the right amount of attention span. So he, t- he takes about 12 minutes to explain, first off, a little bit about how big beer and how beers throughout most of the history as we know it have been made of four ingredients. And and this goes right into another talk that I heard from Sam Caligioni where he talks about how Brian Heitzkaboot Heitz- is, is like uh, putting handcuffs on brewing and how he believes that people shouldn't have this law that basically says you've got to stifle your creativity. And so what he does is he talks about uh, I think it's four different beers that he, that he goes in through that he Wait, created. Um, Sam Calgione is the head brewer of Dogfish Head. Yes, sorry. Oh, those who don't know, yeah. not Chuck that's, Mangio, yeah, that's the first thing I was going to interrupt you and say the exact same thing. Thanks, Chris, for saving me that one. But I also want to define Reinheitsgebot for people who don't know what that is. That's the sorry. German sorry. purity law. Yes, it is. It says that you can only have water, hops. Uh, 
yeast malt. and malt. And, and yeast was yeast was added post Louis Pasteur. He actually talks a little bit about that in the in the TED talk. But um, so he he talks about how these four ingredients are basically what makes up all of beer out there. And why not go out there and be more creative, take more things, and instead of being like Anheuser Busch, who uh, comes in and throws in rice or throws in uh, some other adjunct with the purpose of making beer less flavorful. Come in and make beer more flavorful by adding in grapes and and your saffron and all these other ingredients. Ryan Heiskabut shouldn't be a um, shouldn't be a, a resting to the creativity process of making beer. Uh, it should let you build off of that foundation and grow from there. So this is like my uh, my Dungeons and Dragons argument, where I only use the main three books to create characters, and everybody else uses all the supplements and extra materials and everything else to create theirs. <laughs> and my characters are just better, but at least they get to play around with theirs. So you're the <laughs> our friend, Matt, who had 20 plus uh, D and D 3.5 modules. And he had characters that literally rolled like 20 D sixes worth of damage at like level three or four. Just and, ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I, no, actually, when I play D and D, and this is kind of way off topic, but welcome to the show. Um, <laughs> when I play D and D, I usually cripple my character in some way, I- intentionally uh-huh. to force me out of my comfort zone to make me have to role play. So yes. I'll, I'll, I'll make him blind, or make him partially deaf, or or make him young, or make him obese, where they just like the dexterity score is literally quickness of hand, but not quickness of foot. You know, um, <laughs> I, I will, I will hamper them in some way to make it to where I have to role play a situation as opposed to just rolling the dice on my, my Wednesday night game. Um, I played with the backstory, my very similar to, to some of these other, um, wizard type stories that you read, um, the novels about, but, uh, the wizard basically was touched by some, or the, the sorcerer was touched by something earlier on in his career. He doesn't know about his history, but, and he's, he's been in little... counseling ever since. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got a little bit of insane to him. And so every week I'll roll on the uh, indefinite madness table and play some of that indefinite madness through the entire game. Mm. It works out quite nicely. Yeah, I, I don't want too off topic. I'll let Casey continue, but I just had to add when you oh, play I'm... only war, there's always a bad case of back <gasps> teeth. Oh, out. my God. Only war. We can talk about that in the post show. <laughs> <laughs> so, got, I, guys, you know, I appreciate the D and D talk. I love the nerdiness, but I want to bring this back to the the TED talk real yeah, quick. Fucking yeah. party pooper. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to comment on the 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 Ryan Heiske boat because uh, I did live in Germany for five years. Yeah, and it still um, is. It's still active. Newsflash. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, but here here's the thing. Ryan Heiske boot is is a thing, but it's not it, it's not binding. In the sense that, um, you know, you, you if you brewed a like like for example, wheat beers are popular over there, and uh, the right. original Run Heiskabut anyway was uh, it had to be uh, barley malt, and uh, they you know they modified it to where you can it just said malt where you can right. use wheat or whatever you want for that. Uh, but there's some brewers out there in Germany that are experimenting with different ingredients. Like you're not just you're you're not going to go to jail because you put an additional <laughs> ingredient into into your beer. Well, it's, well, on um, the other end of that, we did a story. I don't know, a year ago, half a year ago. I don't stories was about how uh, German youth are like rising up against the Rheinheitsgebot. No, no, not, not not even that story. With Here. they were they were. There were people talking about how uh, the Ryan Heitzkubut would not classify some kind of stout, milk stout, as yeah, uh, not as not a a beer because by the Ryan Heitzkubut they said it didn't follow the German purity yeah. law. Well, what's what's interesting is that that German brewers, a, a lot of them anyway, use the Ryan Heitzkubut as a like a badge of honor. They'll put it on their bottles that. We are 100 percent compliant with the Ryan Heights kaboot, like with a circle and a star and exclamation points around it and everything. Uh, yeah, the like key, to me, it's like the exact opposite. Like if you're complying with the Ryan Heights kaboot, like oh, way to be boring. Good yeah, job, guys. The the current key with the Ryan Heights kaboot is you can't you can sell whatever you want. You just can't call it beer if it doesn't follow the law. Uh, and that. Good. Yeah. That and that goes down to so you talked about wheat. So malted wheat 
is allowed. Unmalted yes. raw wheat, if you were to just grind it up and put it in there, isn't. And so you couldn't call it beer. And so those those right. types it, of changes. Yes, yeah. it's got to be malt. That's Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, and being in the chat room says, uh, uh, he, 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 he says, uh, so, something along the lines of, uh, uh, if you, if you're just using the Ryan Heights kibbutz, then you're boring and you, you have no taste just like his sister. So, oh, oh, oh wow. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you can't brew tasty things under the Ryan Heights kibbutz. It's just under our current climate. That's how stone has. So stone brewing opened up. A, they bought an old library in Berlin and opened up a big brewery, and they've seen smashing success because they are bringing these big, fresh IPAs and all this stuff that Stone is doing to the people of Europe fresh so they don't have to bother having it imported. It's all right wow. there, and they get it in that 90-day IPA window. Yeah, that's pretty great. I I had not heard that, actually. That's really cool. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's an amazing place. you got to look up pictures of it. I'm dying to go there sometime. So overall, is this a uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down? I'm guessing it's a thumbs up from everybody here, because I, I, I'm actually interested in it, and uh, I, I really don't care for Dogfish Head because I'm a lamo that doesn't appreciate IPA. <laughs> oh, there's so, way more than IPA from Dogfish yeah. Head. Way they more. they do a they do fascinating uh, yeah, history. One twenty, it's a hundred twenty minute IPA. That that's liquid. I mean, that's just paint thinner. <laughs> I was gonna say, but they they do do like their 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 historical beers. You said do yeah, the historical ones. If you want one that is brewed with the spit of half of their brewers, no. oh god, no! You chicha was yeah the chicha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah There's yeah, a whole video yeah. you can look up online of them like chewing this like cornmeal up and spitting it out into the mash. First, I'm gonna need you to look at the screen to look directly into my. I need you to look directly <laughs> into my eyes. About how angry I am about you bringing up Chicha in front of me. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, oh, we can man. get more into uh, Dogfish Head and all of its glory um, in the post show. Yeah, let's go, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, Amos, uh, here in uh, right about two months, we've got something pretty big going on. What could, you want to tell the the folks what what's uh, going to happen around here in these parts? So. Uh, <sighs> I don't even know how to go about this anymore. Um, essentially, I have this thing where I want to contribute to society in some way. I want to make other people's lives better in some way because it makes me feel good about myself because there's no such thing as altruism. And um, <laughs> Not wrong. That, not to get philosophical. Right, right. Uh, we're just uh, looking at the calendar. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, on New Year's Eve, we we don't want anyone to have to spend New Year's Eve alone, no matter where you are in the world, if you're deployed in the military or if you're just separated from your family or just separated from your kids or you you just can't be with your friends. Whatever the case is, we don't want anyone to be alone on New Year's Eve. It's the one holiday where we can actually like do something about it because we're not tied up with our own families. I know it's kind of self-serving, but fuck it, we're doing it anyway. And what we decided to do is, is share that love we're going to stream for 27 hours straight to cover all 26 times. It's actually more. It's 26 hours worth of time zones. Um, and uh, we're going to have a live stream going for 27 hours of chat room presence. And we're going to have multiple different talents. We're going to have some people from last year. This is our third annual. And I can say that because it's the third. It's not the first because first annual is stupid. Exactly. It's the, it's the third <laughs> annual yes. New Year's Eve streamathon. Uh, presented by Ritual Misery, brought to you by Diamond Club and uh, yeah. Frog Pants. And we are going to try to raise money. Last year, we raised $2,073. Uh, year before that, we raised a couple hundred dollars. And we're hoping to raise way more this year. Um, we've got some amazing people. The Have a Drink crew is going to be there, going to be doing some stuff. They they were there last yeah. year. Um, Absolutely. And several other people have already signed up. We've got some some people locked in. And it's going to be amazing. And uh, it, it, New Year's Eve, there's no better time to just chill out. It can be before you go out. It can be when you come back. Just stop in, uh, stop in chat room and uh, in, in the Twitch chat. And uh, I'm not sure how we're going to work it with the Twitch, but we'll we'll figure it out one way or the other, and yep. we'll make that ha happen. Yep. Um, yeah. Here in about a month, uh, the end of November, we plan to have a published schedule along with the uh, you know basically the rules of engagement of how it's going to go down. Uh, just, I just wanted to run down just a few of the names that we have booked already. Uh, we've got the, the wonderful Crunchy. We've got the Gin from uh, the Greek Geek Grills. Uh, Christy Cates. Everybody knows Christy. Uh, we've got the Vod Squad, Geek IO, 
Uh, we're going to have a Diamond Club movie party and so much, so, so much more uh, planned for this. It's it's going to be fantastic. If you watched last year, you know how awesome it can be. It's going to even surpass what last year was. Yep. Um, I absolutely cannot wait. And this year we're handling the giveaway ourselves because whoever whoever garners the most uh, donations, we're going to have a giveaway and we're going to handle it ourselves because last year, man, that was just that 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 was the worst part of the streamathon last year was trying to coordinate all that and then it kind of fell through in the in the, in the end anyway so we we'll come up with something uh but the stream itself was pretty it fantastic was, yeah the stream was amazing and we raised two <laughs> yeah. over two thousand dollars for children's hospitals last year yep and we were still trying to firm up this year's charity uh we kind of came up with a crunchy came up with one and we're we ran into a snag with it we're trying to get that fleshed out um but we are going to have some worthy charity uh, benefiting either veterans, displaced families, or kids. It's got to be one of those three things because that's that's what or we are at the three. core of here. Or all yeah. three, yeah. If you can get displaced veterans, kids, veterans, kids, yeah. Um, <laughs> like seriously, that's, that'd be that'd be tits right there. Uh, like our suggestion was uh, organ donation. That yeah. hits pretty much everyone of yeah. all walks of life. Yeah, absolutely. That that is an example of something that would that would affect all three. Yep. Um, but yeah, I encourage everyone to go to ritualmisery dot com slash twenty seventeen streamathon. Or you could, if you want to jump straight to the sign up sheet for that, you can go to yellow four twenty dot com slash streamathon. And that'll that'll take you to the sign up sheet if you're interested in streaming. Or just or go by ritualmisery dot com and find out all the information right there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we're looking for streamers still. And uh, we're, we're, for, we're also looking for any volunteer yeah, opportunities. Streamers, backenders, uh, people that want to negotiate the channels, people that are really good with uh, with uh, Twitch and can help us out with coordinating everything because that's kind of where it's got to be. And um, yeah, just make we just want to make just, all that happen. Absolutely. So I know um, a back ender or two. Hey, uh, you, you, we, we don't we don't <laughs> back end shame here. No back end shaming. I'm just uh, saying I might know. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's one other thing. I want to announce this. I want to put it out there because it's going to be awesome and it's going to be awkward and it's going to be stupid and silly and fun. Uh, Squid in the chat, he's an old friend of mine from high school and he wants to do a podcast. We don't know what podcast we want to do. He came up with a couple ideas. I didn't like him. I'm just going to be honest because they were about stuff that I'm not an expert on and I don't like not being somewhat of an expert. Uh, like this show is supposed to be funny and I'm not an expert on that, but we make it work anyway. <laughs> um <laughs> And uh, starting next Sunday, right here on uh, on 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 uh, Twitch TV slash Richard Misery Podcast, I, I'm just gonna stop saying that. It's bit.ly slash RMP Live, right here on this channel. Um, we are going to start a show, and the show's idea is that we are looking for show ideas. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! So, the, so the concept is uh, anybody watching right now, you go ahead and shoot us your your best or worst. Uh, show idea your best or worst podcast idea to podcast at ritualmisery.com and we are going to take a randomly picked suggestion and roll with it until it fails or succeeds <laughs> for for one episode for one show I, I i hear that and i go don't give them your worst you're going to give them some really horrible tragic stuff and, and, and that and that's fine because part of it so so for 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 squid for sean it's a matter of getting on the mic and, le and, and learning his mic technique and, and kind of getting that out yep. there. And for me, it's a matter of just throwing ideas against the wall and see what actually, what I like and what I don't like. And all the while working on some, some, uh, some, some improv and some random ideas, we're not going to know ahead of time what it is. We're going to pick it on the spot and just go with it. Uh, no theme music, no nothing else, just raw. Hey, here's a topic. Let's make a show. We're going to try different intros. We're going to try different, different ways of doing things and just, hell with it let's just try some stuff so it's going to be like just random experiments and that's so gonna now, hit it on the head with the bristol stool scale <laughs> i got your first idea right there <laughs> so if you got oh ideas for uh for good or bad shows or just something you would like to see sean and i goof off with podcast at ritualmisery.com let us know and we will randomly pick one and we will go from there uh, very cool. Hey, uh, have a drink, crew. Where can we find you guys on the internet? Wait, they're on the internet. Nope, that's what <laughs> I heard. You know, I, I yeah, you know, I haven't looked them up myself. I haven't, I haven't bothered. Uh, <laughs> but if <laughs> I worry. wanted to find you guys, where, where might that be? Help us out. 
so the site is haveadrinkshow.com. Um, and we're, you can pretty much look for Have a Drink Show on um, any of the social stuff Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And then, of course, YouTube. we're also Have a Drink Show on Twitch and YouTube. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Amos, if, if people wanted to just follow you for some reason, where would they go for that? Uh, like, I should probably do something about that, right? Like maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, you know, it'd be cool if you have like a third, maybe fourth, fifth name that you go by. Oh, you use a Twitter I, handle. I, I do, I do. It's a uh, uh, Ethan Kane. It's an old Dungeons and Dragons character name, actually. Um, so at Ethan Kane on Twitter. Oh, it just popped up on the Nightbot. There you go. Uh, thank you, W. Scott is one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Twitter, check me out on Twitter at rm underscore del noche. Yeah, there you go. And you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Um, very, very, very many thanks to all four of our guests tonight. I didn't expect all of you, all four of you to show up. I'm so glad you did. Uh, I'm really, really overall just happy one of you showed up because otherwise it would have been totally busted promise. <laughs> uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you guys. Um, uh, we are so happy to be here. I think you were Thank having you, us yeah. on. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, and, uh, one more time real quick. We have, we have 43 followers on Twitch. We're looking for 50. We need 50 to, to qualify for the affiliate program supposedly and uh if, if you or a friend or your fake account cruise on by uh bit.ly slash rmp live smash the follow button and help us get help us help us uh turn this into a, an actual thing we'll get like a bunch of perks and stuff so um go make that happen only you can make it happen i mean i've, I've already done all my fake accounts so we're good <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, and of course you can find everything about our show uh, every every show that we do posts on this on our subreddit ritualmisery.reddit.com you can find all these links that we've been talking about and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website ritualmisery.com thank you so much to Kevin McLeod that's my that's my cue to hit the little button right here yep yep smash there. that smash that button smash the button I, I, I've been watching too much uh, Peter McKinnon um, uh, yeah so thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music and thank you for listening for Kent, for me, for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> And there we go. What the hell was that? We didn't hear the stingers. <laughs> no, uh, sometimes it didn't work. Sometimes it didn't go through. Sometimes yeah, it was it like a, it was like somebody was like inhaling to start talking. They were like. Uh, uh.